Bioshock games are thick in atmosphere and are shrouded in mystery. And today, GameRex is going to peel back just a little bit of that mystery by bringing you 10 Bioshock facts you probably didn't know. Number 10. The voice of Elizabeth, Courtney Draper, was very, very dedicated. She's very much a method actor, too, because she cares about actually feeling the feelings that she put into her performance. And as such, she had Ken Levine yell at her in, like, very, very awful, demeaning ways to get her to start crying in order to do some of the scenes in Bioshock Infinite. And while that might sound kind of funny, or even silly, when somebody's trying to get into a specific mindset, oftentimes replicating environments that would cause that type of mindset make it much easier. And I don't know about you, but I'm not exactly a big fan of having people shout demeaning crap at me. Like, it's not really one of my big hobbies. Number nine, the Circus of Values vending machines in Bioshock are actually the creator of Bioshock itself, Ken Levine. When you walk by and it's sitting there obnoxiously yelling, Kill your cravings in the Circus of Values! That's the guy who came up with Bioshock. He also did it in Bioshock Infinite because he seems to not be able to get enough of that annoying vaudeville voice. I appreciate a lady who appreciates values! I mean, to be fair, it's the kind of annoying that I find amusing, the kind that kind of intentionally is annoying and is trying to generate a response in some way. But I have talked to people whose response is not understanding. I don't know, in my opinion, that's a layer of the humor in Bioshock that it's enjoyable. Number eight, the little sisters in Bioshock were different before they were little sisters. They were a number of different things, and this is somewhere where that humor I was just talking about was, I think, morbidly incorporated but didn't eventually make it through but I mean they had it as everything from a mutated sea slug to a dog in a wheelchair to a frog with a funnel in its anus like a weird funnel in its anus that drew out their precious poop that, that was then manufactured into plasmids personally I think the little sisters came out a lot more interesting but it's hard not to laugh at that Number seven, just like the Little Sisters, the scenario actually went through quite a few different ideas as well. First, it was going to take place on a space station, which is funny because Tacoma, a spiritual successor to Bioshock, takes place on a space station that looks a lot like Rapture. But aside from a space station, it was also going to be on an island run by a cult and an underwater Nazi base. I'm guessing the underwater part must have been their favorite part about that, and really, not everybody's a big fan of Nazis. And they moved over to a beautiful Art Deco dystopia, deep, deep inside the ocean. Number six, one of Bioshock Infinite's contributing writers, Rihanna Pratchett, also worked on Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Heavenly Sword, Overlord, and Mirror's Edge. On top of that, she's the daughter of fantasy writer Terry Pratchett. Just in case you don't know who that is, have you ever heard of Discworld? It's a series of like 41 novels. It was published from 1983 to 2015. That's a long running series. And she's a talented writer too. I don't know if you've ever played Tomb Raider or Rise of the Tomb Raider, but those games are great. Seriously, wonderful. And like anybody who is involved with writing Bioshock Infinite, not so bad themselves either. Number five, in 2014, Fox News used Bioshock Infinite's logo, or at least one that they pretty much stole from Bioshock Infinite, in a segment on immigration called Defending the Homeland. Perhaps the most amusing part about this is that that's pretty much what Bioshock Infinite is attempting to criticize really, really hard, that American exceptionalism. But you know, you know, nobody ever said Fox News was exactly self-aware. But yeah, that's kind of what Bioshock Infinite's about. When Ken Levine caught wind of it, somebody asked him what he thought of it and if it was copyright infringement, and his response was, it's irony. Number four, there was a Bioshock movie in the works about the rapture-oriented story, and Gore Verbinski, the director of three of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, was attached to direct, but it fell through on account he didn't want to pursue the movie with a PG-13 rating. He wanted it to be rated R because, you know, the really weird injecting kids with serums that mutate them thing. I mean, when you just say it like that, it does actually sound pretty R-rated, and I can't imagine them making it without that, or like, cutting away from that, which seems kind of weird. The whole point of it would be to make, you know, a movie based around the ideas, and that was pretty central to everything in it, so. I would actually say that's the right choice. I would not want to see a crappy PG-13 Bioshock movie. 
Number three, Booker DeWitt was based on a disgraced Pinkerton National Detective Agency employee. Obviously fictional, but they actually at one point employed more agents than there were in the standing army of the United States, and the state of Ohio actually outlawed them because they feared it could be hired as a private army. Frankly, if you go through their history, there are some kind of sketchy things that they did, you know, killing a lot of people who really didn't know better, and stuff like that. The game actually goes into it a little bit. It's pretty interesting, and although they take a little bit of liberty with it, it is based, in fact. Number two, when the art designers were making splicers, they used World War I archives, as well as images of plastic surgeries when the techniques were in their infancy, in order to figure out what they would look like. They actually used some fairly disturbing images of people that had had things done through the years because of an accident, and probably the most disturbing was the model for the thuggish splicers, Henry Ralph Lumley, who was actually a burn victim, and it just, it's not a good scene, for lack of a better way of putting it. And finally, number one Quark from Star Trek, who is one goofy looking fella, at least thanks to prosthetics and makeup, but in real life was named Armin Shimmerman, is also the voice of Andrew Ryan. Now, what's even more interesting is he ended up actually playing Dr. Potter in the 2011 adaption of Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged, which Andrew Ryan is actually based on Ayn Rand. He has a pretty long rap sheet of work, and he's also Dr. Nefarious in Ratchet and Clank. But, in all honesty, Andrew Ryan is probably his best role. What is the most vicious obscenity ever perpetrated on mankind? Slavery? The Holocaust? Dictatorship? No. It's the tool with which all that wickedness is built. Altruism. Couple of quick bonus facts for you. There's actually a Bioshock art book up for download on Softpedia. We'll include the link to that in the description. It's high resolution and it's awesome. And aside from Bioshock Infinite, the door lock combination 0451 has also been in System Shock 1 and 2, Bioshock 2, Deus Ex, and several other games. It's supposedly a reference to the Ray Bradbury book Fahrenheit 451. Have any interesting Bioshock facts to share or just want to talk Bioshock? Let's do that in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please click like, and if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week. As always, we thank you for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we will see you next time right here on GameRanks.